Good evening. Welcome to St. Margaret's Episcopal Church. My name is Richard Weinberg and it's my pleasure to serve as the rector of St. Margaret's here in Washington, DC. We're joining you live from our sanctuary along Connecticut Avenue. We're so grateful to all of you who have joined us in the Zoom room. Uh, today marks the beginning of our Lenten journey as we traverse over these 40 days of Lent and begin with Ash Wednesday. We have organized ourselves as a parish so that many of us have ashes at home, and we hope you have them standing by as we move to that part of the service. Please know as we begin, however, that if you do not have ashes with you at home, that is entirely okay. You can participate fully in our service uh, by following along in the bulletin, uh, which I know Annika, our virtual verger, has placed in the chat box for you to download and follow along. We invite you to um, participate as fully as you feel comfortable. Uh, there's a couple of hymns in the service, as well as prayers and readings. Um, the reading, one of the readings will be from one of you on Zoom. Uh, so we're trying to go for a hybrid experience. And um, this is in a way an experiment as it is the first live service of this nature that we've done from the sanctuary uh, throughout the pandemic. So we thank you for your patience as we navigate a new thing. I also want to give a warm welcome if you do happen uh, to not be part of our community, but are visiting us and have found your way into this Zoom space or whether you're watching this on demand at some later point. We acknowledge each and every time that we gather as a community that our worship is what it is because of those of us who are present. So your presence is a gift to us and we're so honored to be here together this evening to mark the beginning of our Lenten journey. Blessed be the God of our salvation. God is with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. reading from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of Yahweh is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says Yahweh, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts, not your clothing. Return to Yahweh, your God, who is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether God will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind, a grain offering and a drink offering for Yahweh, your God. 
blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of Yahweh weep. Let them say, spare your people, O God, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus, the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus said, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from God in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your God who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not let the hypocrite, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. For whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your God who is in secret. And your God who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your God who is in secret. And your God who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven for neither moth nor rust consumes, for thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Wednesday is different this year. We are not assembled in church as in years past. We are not sliding somberly into pews, silently accepting ash crosses on our foreheads from our priests. But we are all gathered, gathered at home, some of us with family members or friends, some by ourselves, and make no mistake, as we partake of this liturgy together on Zoom, YouTube, or Facebook, we are a community, broken apart, yet gathered across the city, from across the country and the world. God has called us together to acknowledge our errors of the past and to look with hope to a future in which we confess our dependence on God. Ash Wednesday is the start of the 40 days of Lent, and through fasting and prayer, it draws us into a period of reflection during which we examine ourselves more honestly and repent of the faults we find. Tradition gives us little prods and practices to help us along the difficult Lenten journey. If, for, for instance, we give up something sweet, like chocolate, or something sweetly addictive, like Instagram or Netflix, the theory goes, our discomfort reminds us to turn to God instead. The goal of spiritual practices in Lent is to set aside our egos and turn instead to God and to God's children. But Ash Wednesday is different this year. 
I sometimes feel as if I've already been praying and fasting for over a year now, that last year's Lent never ended. I took my first COVID-19 test 368 days ago on March 14th, after the rector of the church where I was serving tested positive for coronavirus. I remember how scared the healthcare workers in the clinic at Cleveland Park looked. My husband and I went into isolation immediately. We stopped seeing our friends. Like many people, I have worn a mask outdoors every day since. When Easter came last year, my Lenten fast did not end. It continued as the plague spread and I watched COVID deaths pile up like grains of sand at the bottom of an hourglass. My fast continues this evening as I mourn each new soul that returns to God without the touch of friends and families descended on its way. But even this fast of mourning and praying for the dead and their families is not enough. During Lent, God calls us to turn to him completely and forsake all our concerns. God asks us to strip ourselves bare of our egos. Our little fasts, our penances, and our prayer plans are inadequate, God says. The trumpet calls out twice in the reading from the prophet Joel. The trumpets are made from ram's horns, like this one called the shofar. Blow the trumpet, sound the alarm, is the first cry of warning shattered out by the prophet Joel. This year, the year is around the sixth century BCE, sometime after the Jews have returned from exile in Babylon. A plague of locusts has devastated the country, killing cattle and crops. Wild animals cry out for mercy and people starve. Now in the wake of that plague, God's army approaches. The day of Yahweh, the very end time of God's judgment is coming. The Israelites must prepare themselves. And then suddenly, God has a change of heart. Like a soft voice echoing in the silence that follows the trumpet call, God calls out to the Israelites, come back to me, turn to me out of your brokenness. I will heal you. I am yours and you are mine. Repent, rend your hearts with fasting, return to me, your God. God turns from threatening judgment to offering forgiveness and healing. But there's a big ask attached. The Israelites must strip their egos bare and offer their open hearts to God. It's not clear in the reading how the Israelites have sinned or what they have done that, is ta that has taken them away from God. Perhaps like us, they are merely human broken in the myriad ways that humans are. Perhaps their sin is simply that they have lost sight of their brokenness. Perhaps they don't consider themselves reliant on God. Their repentance demands a radical return to God with all their minds and purpose. Lancelot Andrews, the 17th century Bishop of Winchester addresses the concept of turning and turning again in a meditation on the passage from Joel we just heard. His 17th century text rendered it as, turn ye even to me, saith the Lord, with all your heart and with fasting, with mourning, rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. First we turn, says Andrews, wherein we look forward to God and with our whole heart resolve to turn to him. Then a turn again wherein we look backward to our sins, wherein we have turned from God and with beholding them, our very heart breaks. 
Andrew says we turn twice, once toward God and then again backward in recognition of our brokenness and of our separation from God. So how about us this Lent? I have something to tell you. God doesn't want us to give up chocolate for Lent. What God does require is a turning from pride and from all those mental games we play in which we convince ourselves that we can succeed in life on our own because we don't have to do this alone. God is with us on our Lenten journey. In fact, that's the point. God knows we can't endure this whole experience of Lent, of the coronavirus, of racism and social discord without God. God is with us in this. Has our anxiety about the plague overcome our ability to truly focus on our identity in Jesus? Or can we feel God's mercy and love surrounding us as we contemplate our sins and our brokenness? A help in this is our community of faith. The second trumpet in Joel calls all the people together. All the Israelites gather to sanctify the fast, the aged, the baby at the breast, the newly married couple. Together, we too respond to God, declaring our openness with our fellows, the transformation of our community and ourselves. Ash Wednesday is different this year. In the past, a priest has imposed the gritty black crosses on our heads. This year, we impose them on each other. A child marks the forehead of her father. Husband marks wife. Lover touches lover. A singleton imposes them on, her, on herself. And yet, we are all here in unity. The ashes remind us of our mortal bodies. The warm, ha warm hands imposing them tell us that we are connected to each other by our humanity. Our own bodies are made of the dust of stars that exploded billions of years ago. We are made of stardust. We are connected to the universe brought into being by our creator God. Without God, we are helpless. Together, with God, we can turn again toward the future and what it brings. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christian is observed with great devotion the days of Jesus Christ's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who because of notorious sins had been separated from the body were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you therefore in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our moral nature, let us now kneel or reflect before God, our maker and redeemer.
Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, I want to explain how the imposition of ashes will work. We are going to impose ashes on one another here in the sanctuary first. We invite you to watch. Um, there are just a few of us here, uh, so that will just take a minute. And then we have a monitor where we can see you. And at that time, I'll come and tell you that it's your turn. And uh, we'll switch to gallery mode so that we can all see one another. And the text that you're to say as you impose yourself or your family member is in the bulletin on page seven. And those words are, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are but dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are but dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, but to dust you shall return. Friends, uh, we invite you to impose yourselves at this time. We continue with the litany of penitence. Most holy and merciful one, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess, we confess to you, Lord. Our anger and our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess, we confess to you, Lord. 
our temporal love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us for your mercy and Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your incarnate word, bring, bring us, us with all your saints, saints to the joy of Christ's Christ resurrection. Almighty God, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to ministers to declare and pronounce to God's people the impenitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. God pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe the Holy Gospel. Therefore, we beseech God to grant us true repentance and the Holy Spirit, that those things may please God, which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now, friends, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share signs of peace by waving and by greeting one another in the chat box. Peace, everyone. Uh, we're nearing the end of our service, but I just wanted to say uh, one more word of welcome if you joined us late. Uh, we're so glad that you have chosen to spend your Ash Wednesday with us. Um, I have no idea how it's been going from your perspective, but from our perspective, we're, we're so glad that we've been able to do it in this new way. We'll certainly debrief and appreciate your feedback as we continue trying new ways of worshiping during these dispersed times. Uh, I do want to highlight that today is the deadline to register for our Linton program called Discover. Um, Annika can post a link in the chat box about uh, more information about this program and how to register. It will be a six week offering uh, via Zoom at 12.30 p.m. on Sundays. Um, it will be facilitated by mentors from among our own congregation and it will be especially uh, a time for learning to tell our own stories of faith, being able to study the Bible together weekly and really in a more intimate, um, uh, an int intimate setting, get to know one another. And so I commend this opportunity to all of you. Um, we hope that you would consider uh, journeying through this program called Discover, uh, which begins this coming Sunday. And so that we can prepare and have mentors placed with with the groups, um, we do need you to register tonight uh, so that we can uh, be ready to uh, run this program on Sunday. Uh, we will be back uh, worshiping uh, each Sunday throughout Lent. Our worship service of morning prayer is at 10.30 a.m. live on Zoom. And the link to join us is always on our homepage, stmargaretsdc.org. And so receive this blessing. May God, who does not despise the broken spirit, give you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. 
Amen. And the blessing of God, source of all being, incarnate word and Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.